I, I told him, I, I said, Adam, I think I'm gonna have to get in the pool now. And I was thinking, gosh, like I am a wuss. If I have, if I have to get in the pool now and I'm only at three centimeters, what the heck am I gonna do um, for the rest of the time? Hey everyone, it's been a few weeks since I gave you an update and obviously a lot has changed. Um, so we have Sawyer with us now and we're really excited about him. He's such a good baby. He sleeps well, eats well. He's not usually fussy. Um, and he's just precious. We just love our newest addition to our family and his siblings are crazy about him. So I want to start off this video by just saying thank you so much. We've had so many emails and um, texts and messages on social media asking how Sawyer was doing. And um, so I wanted to give you this birth story video just to um, just to kind of fill you in on the events that happened uh, around his delivery and just how faithful God has been throughout everything. Um, so let me start off by saying I had several prayers going into uh, the time that I would be delivering Sawyer and actually these prayers started months and months before his actual birth. Um, but uh, the first thing I've had, so the first three children that we had, um, we delivered at the hospital and those experiences um, helped form a, a negative opinion or a negative um i guess opinion is the right word about hospital births um for us and uh none of them were good um and some of them were downright awful uh, experiences so and and my concern is that um that women just think that that's normal um some of the things and i'm not going to get into that on this video that would be a rant um and if you really want to know uh you can email me and i would i'll gladly share details with you um but the lord's having to do some healing in me about that because uh like i said we just had some very bad experiences with the hospital um, deliveries and I just am afraid that a lot of women just think that's the normal thing and that it's okay and um, once I realized that it was not I was like well this baby I mean he and Sawyer and Travis are five years apart almost exactly five years apart so over those last five years I've contemplated what we would do should we have another baby and I was fully convinced that we were not supposed to have another hospital birth. So we went to a birth center that's actually an hour and 45 minutes away. That's the closest birth center to us. And we have several friends that have gone there um, and have, I mean, I've heard nothing bad about it, all good things. And um, we knew it was gonna be quite a trek, but we knew it would be worth it to have um, a different experience. So we uh we started going there when we found out we we're pregnant and um i've had really really um good visits um they are very hands off they uh they just kind of let your pregnancy progress as it's supposed to they do monitoring of you they do um you know ultrasounds periodically or if they have a concern about something but nothing nothing like my experience with um a hospital practice where it's like it's very it's a lot more invasive I guess is what I'm trying to say so <clears throat> we were loving it um, my prayers getting back to my prayers so my prayers have been that um, because our drive is so long that first of all I would go into labor I knew this was a stretch but I'm like the Lord can do anything so I was going to pray this prayer and I had friends praying this prayer for me um, that I would go into labor on an appointment day so that I wouldn't have to be sitting at home guessing is it time is it time 
um, or you know Adam having to deliver the baby on the way to the birth center or something like that so uh, which he was prepared for and everyone that we know was fully confident in Adam's preparedness and experience um, that you know birthing farm animals which is a little different than birthing your own baby but uh, or delivering your own baby but anyways um, we were hoping that was like plan C or D you know um, and so that was my first prayer my second prayer was that Adam's allergies would clear up so we're in the middle of this pandemic right now and um, <laughs> I'm not going to go into that um, <laughs> because that will be another rant. But um, there have been restrictions that have been put on the birth center um, legally that they had to um, adhere to. And I knew if Adam was symptomatic at all um, with, uh, with his breathing or anything that they would not allow him to be in in the room with me when I gave birth. They wouldn't allow him to be in the birth center at all. So I would be alone with the midwife, um, which as I played out these scenarios in my head, I, you know, I knew the Lord's always with me. I was like, you know, Jesus, you are with me all the time. And he really did give me so much peace about that even if I would have to be in there without my husband to give birth. Um, but I went through several weeks of really, um, really doubting, really being very fearful about that. Um, because, you, I mean, you know if you've given birth before, I mean, that's no joke. You know, especially if you've given birth naturally before, it is no joke. And you need all the support you can get. Um, and I wanted him in there but he has horrible horrible allergies this time of year and they really started flaring up um i guess uh, probably about three weeks before the baby was due and so that had me concerned but so that was my other prayer and i had friends praying that prayer for me as well as that he would his allergies would clear up we were doing all the things we were doing all the natural things we could think of to do all the teas honey elderberry um broth um oils i mean anything we could think of fire cider anything we could think of um and also over-the-counter medicines also just trying to knock this thing out which we don't usually do over-the-counter medicines but we wanted this gone and um it was it was taking a little longer than i was comfortable with with the natural methods and so we started diving into other stuff it just wasn't it wasn't helping um but eventually it did so um and then as time went on um he was due on april 26th and when my due date came um and went i had started having prodromal labor which is basically where your body uh, is practicing for labor. I mean, that sounds really cute and it's not cute at all. Um, because you really do think you're in labor because, uh, it's different from Braxton Hicks contractions because Braxton Hicks usually are, um, you know, there's no rhyme or reason to them. They just come and go whenever, but prodromal labor is where your body actually starts contract or your uterus starts contracting, um, at, a steady pace so it it progresses like regular labor I had this with um, Travis really really bad and um, it was a horrible experience I did not want to have it again this time um, but it started with Sawyer around his due date and um, so we just dealt with it we we had appointments periodically anyways so Thankfully, the prodromal labor really started and stopped around our appointment days, and so it was fine. Um, you know, we spent one whole day pretty much over um, at the birth center um, where they were checking and monitoring, and I was walking and walking and walking the parking lot because I was still having contractions. They were still getting 
steady, steadier, closer together, more intense, and um, then all of a sudden they just stopped, and I wasn't progressing. So we went home, and um, so after, when you're past your due date, you start going to be seen more frequently. They start doing um, non-stress tests on you to just to monitor the baby while you're having a contraction, how the baby is dealing with the contraction. They do an ultrasound to check your fluid level and your placenta to make sure everything looks like it's still intact and that the baby has enough fluid but not too much fluid. Um, and everything looked fine. So as they were monitoring me, they were comfortable with me continuing the pregnancy. Now the catch is that at 42 weeks, they are required to transfer you to the hospital for an induction. And that is something I did not want to happen. I have had two inductions. Um, I was not wanting another one and I certainly was not wanting to be in the hospital, remember? So, um, so as the 42 week mark started approaching quickly and we still weren't seeing any signs of actual labor happening, um, I started praying and started asking other people to pray, like, please, you know, please ask God to, to, um, help me to go into spontaneous labor because I don't want to be in the hospital. I don't want to be induced again. Um, so it was a little bit of a beat the clock kind of thing. And, um, plus I, I have fairly large babies anyways. And so <laughs> Travis was a week past his due date. Um, Sawyer coming up on two weeks past his due date um, and Travis was about nine pounds um, when he was born. I was like, I don't know. I don't know about this. Like I, I would, I would rather him come out very soon <laughs> than to wait and see if I have 11 pound baby, you know? Um, so we, um, as the 42 week mark was approaching, uh, we started talking to the midwives about natural induction techniques that we could try um, at the birth center that I, that would still allow me to give birth there, um, but would get things moving along. So I um, I talked to them. the f The first thing that they try is a castor oil drink. It's a castor oil cocktail. It has several things in it, and. Um, I was not looking forward to that, um, but I've heard people, I mean, people who weren't even in the care of a midwife who were just trying to get labor started would drink castor oil. I mean, I've heard that. That's been, that's like an age old thing um, and that it worked for them. And so I wasn't opposed to it, but I certainly didn't want to do that. My last visit I had with them. Um, the midwife talked to me about having a castor doing the castor oil cocktail on the way to my next appointment which would have been two days after that um and um then at the appointment they would perform um a natural induction technique um, called the foley bulb uh, which i had never heard of before but it's basically um uh, it's a way of stretching your cervix of opening your cervix up um, because at this point I was not dilated and, um, so I was not looking forward to that because I thought that was a little more invasive than I wanted to go. I know a lot of people, a lot of women have their, um, membranes swept, um, and that sometimes helps. I've actually had that done with all three of my other ones and it never helped me. <laughs> so, um, but this was a little more, um, intense, this, this technique was. And so I wasn't opposed to it, but I really didn't want to do that. I was, I was more, um, I was more apt to try the castor oil, but she, the way that she gave it to me, um, was that it would be, it would be a two part thing. It would be the castor oil cocktail on the way. And then it would be the Foley bulb once I got there to stretch the cervix and get things going. So we waited, we tried everything, all the natural, old wives tales about how to get labor started we were trying at home beforehand because I really just didn't want to to induce at all and I had friends um who who were who were encouraging me to try 
the castor oil. I had friends who were encouraging me to, I mean, do anything to, to get this baby here. Um, and then I had friends that said, no, just wait, like just, you know, keep calm, just, you know, let it progress naturally. And which is really what I wanted to do, but I also had all these other fears and things that were going on in my mind. Um, and it really, it just took a lot of prayer, like as with any decision. Um, but this was a big decision for us. So Adam and I really talked about it. I prayed so much about this and, um, I just, I, I knew God would give me peace about something, um, related to this and we would just wait on that answer. So, um, <laughs> when I asked him for peace about it, I also, I said to him, Lord, give me, give me a sign that my body's ready for this. Cause I certainly didn't want to force him out in any way, even very gently. I didn't want to force him out. If he wasn't ready, if he wasn't developed enough, if we had the due date wrong, you know, that kind of thing. So, so I wanted, I wanted peace about it. And, um, he, so the night before my appointment, I had already had peace about trying the cocktail um, on the way. I still didn't have peace about the Foley bowl, but I was just like, let's just wait and see what happens. Um, but we got all the ingredients for the cocktail and, um, and were ready and prepared to do that the next morning on the way to the appointment. The night before the appointment, I was... Um, awakened by some pretty intense contractions. Contractions that I knew were real contractions instead of Braxton Hicks contractions and um, and I was hopeful that they would continue. They didn't continue but um, not to be, I don't want to go into detail because I don't know who is watching this video, but I could tell um, the next morning that they had that they had um, started doing some work. We'll just leave it at that. The contractions were starting to to um, actually progress me, open my cervix, um, so uh, preparing my body for labor. They did not continue regularly, but I was contracting on the way to the appointment. I called the midwife and said, I'm going to try this. Um, cocktail we've been I've been talking to the other midwife all weekend about it and um, and she said okay that's fine and she said you know what's your plan are you planning on spending the night at a hotel like staying in the area or what you know what's your game plan you know thinking this may or may not work um, honestly and I said well we'll just play it by ear we're not opposed to staying in the area at a hotel or whatever um, to see what happens but I'm really just hoping it just happens. And so I drank the cocktail on the way. We got there. Uh, I was having contractions and they, they seemed different. They seemed more intense than Braxton Hicks. Um, they did the, my appointment. They monitored me on the non-stress test and um, they said, everything looks good still. And then they asked like, what are you wanting to do? And I said, well, they talked about the Foley bulb, and um, so the the midwife checked me. She said I was at two centimeters, and um, she said you um, she would not recommend the Foley bulb. And so for that, I was thankful. That was a prayer answer because I did not want to do the Foley bulb. She just recommended not doing it and just seeing if the castor oil worked. Um, and so she said, "You're welcome to go walk." So Adam and I went to walk and we started walking around the, the parking lot. Now this is a Saturday, which was a perfect time <laughs> to be in labor because um, none of the surrounding businesses had people there at their offices. Parking lots were clear and um, then the birth center didn't have anybody there except for a nurse and the midwife. So it was really a nice time just to be relaxed, if you can relax while you're in labor, but to uh, very, you know, calmly and without much interruption, walk around and try to get labor going. So I was walking and, um, I started having contractions that were a little more intense than I had had it previously. And 
what do you know, they started, they started uh, uh, being timeable. They started to come become, you know, regular and, um, and then start to, in, uh, to get closer together. So I'm still thinking because I've been scarred by this prodromal labor for so long. I'm still thinking, I don't know if this is the real thing or not but it's acting like it again. So I kept walking. It was okay. So I started walking at 11. Yes. I started walking at 11. The midwife told me to come back in at one and she would check me again to see if I progressed any. So I kept walking and by 12 it was becoming obvious that this was something and i i was finding it hard to walk during a contraction i had to stop i had to breathe you know that kind of thing still in my mind i'm thinking i don't know it, you know i've been so scarred by this i don't know if this is real or not so continued walking until my contractions were two minutes apart it was about 12, 20, 12, 25, something like that. And I told Adam, I said, I know she said wait till one, but I feel like I should go tell her that my contractions are two minutes apart. And he was like, okay, go ahead. So he, he waited on me to go in and she was, my midwife was actually starting walking out of the, um, down the hallway towards me. And she said, I noticed you were still here walking and I don't know if she had seen me stopping during contractions or whatever, but she said, I thought I better go ahead and ask if you want me to check you again before one o'clock. And, um, I said, yes. And so she checked me and she said, well, you're at a three. And I said, okay, so I'm progressing, but still I'm thinking, man, these are hard contractions. Why am I not more than a three? And she said, um, that, um, she would go ahead and put me in a room. She could tell I was contracting. She could tell they were painful and, sh and I was progressing. So she put me in a room and she called the, um, birth assistant who is actually a midwife also. Um, and she had actually taught our classes. Oh, I forgot to tell you another one of my God things. So the weeks leading up to this, um, as most women probably do, I started imagining what it was going to be like, what labor was going to look like, who was going to be there, what sounds I was going to make during labor, you know, like just kind of trying to play the thing over in my head. Well, um, every time I played it over in my head, so this practice has like six midwives. I've seen all of them, I think. Um, and some I've seen more than others. This particular midwife that I always envisioned in my mind having, I had actually not seen very much there. I didn't know much about her. Um, I, I had only seen her for like one visit, maybe two visits my entire pregnancy and none towards the end. I had not seen her. So, um, but every time I envisioned the day I was in labor, I always envisioned this particular midwife as being the, the lady who delivered the baby. I know they have a birth assistant, at least one present for every birth. Adam and I went to a birth class um, there because we just didn't know much about how it how it looked at the birth center. What does labor look like? What kind of positions? What kind of equipment? Like what, you know, all that kind of stuff. And so we went to a birth class and the lady that taught the birth class was a birth assistant there. Um, and she's actually a midwife also. Um, and like a certified midwife also, but she's a birth assistant. And so, um, and she took us, there's three birth rooms there at the birth center. She, for our class, took us into this one birth room and, um, and that's where we were the whole time. That's where she explained everything. That's where we sat down and saw the bed and saw the pool and saw the shower and saw all the equipment and all the baby stuff laid out and everything. So like, that's the only room I knew. So, of course, when I'm imagining being in labor, that's the room that I imagine being in for labor um, because that's the only one I knew what it looked like. So, in my mind, I had uh, my midwife, Marsha, who I didn't know much about in my mind. 
and um, the birth assistant being um, a lady named Malia uh, who taught our class in that room. So as Marsha, who is the midwife on call that day, um, is taking me to my room, she's getting me checked in, she's, you know, whatever, I don't know how, what you're supposed to call it, but she's getting me situated in the room to, to labor. She asked me as we're walking, what room do you want to be in? And I said, it doesn't matter. You know, I'm in pain. I don't care. You know, I said, it doesn't matter. She takes me of course to this room that in my mind I have I have given birth in um, I have prepared to be in this room uh, the same room that we had our class in so that's the room she took us into I didn't know who the birth assistant was I know they have many many birth assistants here at the birth center but I didn't know who she had called to be the assistant or who was on call to be the birth assistant that day and we um, as she was getting me situated she asked me like you know, do you want to sit on the ball for a while? And I was like, sure. So I sat on the ball and then she said, I just called the birth assistant. And I said, who's the birth assistant? And she said, um, Malia is on call today. And I was like, of course, Lord, of course she is. You know, I'm here in this room that I had always imagined I would give birth in because it's the only room I knew. And Marsha, who I don't even know very well, is the midwife on call, and Malia, who um, had taught our class, is the birth assistant for that day. It was like deja vu, because I had played this over in my mind so many times. So, all oh God, like it was just one of those things where I was just like, I know that was you, Lord. I know that was you. And so, back to the actual labor. <clears throat> so, I'm in there, and... Um, and I am obviously in a lot of pain, but I was very, I was very surprised at how painful it was at that point because she had said I was only at three centimeters and you're supposed to wait until as long as possible to get in the birthing pool because they say the birthing pool acts like a natural epidural. It's, it's sort of a painkiller. Um, it helps um, you just manage the pain better to be in the pool and I love a bath like I take a bath every single day um, that is my form of relaxation that's the way that I have um, prepared for labor and so um, as I'm dealing with these contractions Adam's <laughs> putting essential oils on my chest that I can breathe he's putting my favorite essential oil blend in the diffuser in the room um, they've got nice music going. It's very calm. It's very soothing. Um, and I, I start going to the bathroom because remember there is castor oil in my system. So I start going to the bathroom. I start bleeding a lot. Um, and that scares me. I've never done that in labor before. Um, so we called the midwife back in there. She checked me. She said, you are progressing. You're progressing quickly. So she said, I think that's where all the blood is coming from. So, of course, she's monitoring me. Um, we, um, I, I keep coming back to the birthing ball, spending a little time there, going through my contractions. Um, I make this sound very easy, y'all. It was, it was not easy. It was not easy at all. Um, I wasn't crying yet or anything like that, but it was, I was really having to concentrate hard on what I was doing, on my breathing, um, to not just lose it. So, um, but I would go from the birthing ball back to the bathroom to use the bathroom, come back to the birthing ball. The last time I went to the bathroom, I got up to wash my hands and I was standing there at the sink having a contraction. And when the contraction was over, I could not move. Like it was one of those moments. And I like, as I'm telling you this, I can remember the pain. Like I'm, I'm starting to like feel the pain again. Um, but it was like my legs would not move. I was in so much pain. He had moved down apparently so much that, um, you know, my hips were not doing well. I just, I felt like I could not move. And I, I told him, I, I said, Adam, I think I'm going to have to get in the pool now. And I was thinking, gosh, like I am a wuss. If I have, if I have to get in the pool now and I'm only at three centimeters, what the heck am I going to do um, for the rest of the time? So, you know, I'm starting to freak out a little bit, trying not to, but I'm freaking out in my mind that I, I, I can't do this. Like, I'm not capable of doing this. 
um, for several more hours. I just can't. Now, um, if you know anything about labor, you know that on average, women will progress in active labor from um, a, a centimeter an hour is what on average they do. I, I generally have pretty quick labors, but I'm usually already dilated some when I start active labor. So, um, so that's usually the case for me about a, about a centimeter an hour. Um, but, um, so anyway, she, he went and got the midwife. She comes in, she says, okay, let's get you to the pool. And I'm thinking, I can't even walk. Like I can't walk to the pool. And, um, so they helped me, Adam and um, the midwife helped me to the pool, got up, got in. They're still filling the pool up because they didn't expect it to go that fast either. Although I'm glad they had started already. Um, at that point I got in the pool. Um, it was warm, it felt good, but it did not take the edge off the contractions that I thought it would, like I was expecting it to. So I was a little concerned and disappointed about that because I'm thinking, how am I gonna stay in here for hours and do this? without help um, and at that point the birth assistant comes in who I knew was coming and asked her to take some pictures um, I will show a few of those pictures at the end of this video um, for anyone that's interested to see them they're not graphic or anything like that um, but they're really beautiful and I'm so glad that she took them for me and I just remember looking up at my midwife and saying why do I feel like I need to push? I mean, it was had to be this deer in the headlights. Like, why do I feel like I need to push? And um, just as calm as she could be, she looked at me and she goes, you might listen to your body. Your body knows what to do. And, you know, I'm so used to the hospital atmosphere where they're telling you when to push, when not to push. They're checking you every 20 seconds to see how, you know, how dilated you are. Um, you know, I'm used to very invasive deliveries and for her to be so hands off and, and so calm about it and saying, you got this, your body knows what to do. Um, that was the most refreshing part about this entire past year's experience at the birth center was just having the reassurance, having someone very very knowledgeable and very capable of delivering the baby of handling emergencies um you know knowledgeable of all the things related to birth be so hands off and just watch me and say your body knows what to do your body will do this and i was like yes you know like in the moment i'm thinking no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't know what to do. <laughs> you know, I don't know what to do. Um, but, you know, think, looking back, I'm like, I'm so thankful that she said that. I'm so thankful that I had that experience to where I did get to watch my body just do what it was made to do. And right after I asked her that, I started, um, I don't even know how to describe it. I've tried to describe it to friends and I don't know how to describe it, but it was like a non tearful cry, but it was so like deep in my gut that it was just, it was like a bearing down. Um, as I closed my eyes and I was bearing down in this like low cry, um, I could hear the midwife say, um, you know, you're doing great. He's crowning. Um, you're you're doing perfect. Keep going. You know, I just heard all these words of affirmation, and um, and you know, they told me when he was crowning, he can't. His head came out, um, and my breathing qu quickened. Um, if you've ever done a natural birth, you know what I'm talking about. It was like, <laughs> you know, just this freaking out kind of thing just from all the pain just from I mean that's the most painful part of the entire process is that one moment when the baby's head comes out so um so they I, I listened to him again I had my eyes closed the whole time I heard I heard them say slow your breathing slow your breathing and so I did I really concentrated on slowing my breathing and they said okay you're going to deliver your baby you're going to meet your baby with the next push and so um I waited and I was kind of like, you know, was taking so long because I've, I thought the contraction would, would start immediately after that, but it seemed like forever between that contraction and the other one. 
and I just remember them and Adam talking about how much hair he had while I was like waiting for the, you know the rest of him to come out <laughs> and um so that gave me a little bit of like they see his head they know he's okay like they see all of his hair that gave me like the push to push if you know what I mean so when the contraction came I delivered the rest of him and um and I was so relieved and so weak and from from like squeezing um, that you know the midwife said okay reach down and pull your baby up and I still have my eyes closed I didn't even see him um, and I, I said I don't know if I can because I was just so weak um, Adam said one of the most terrifying moments of his life was looking down and seeing the baby under the water and not picking him up you know and I understand um, he's fine water births are completely natural and normal and um, he had not taken taken a breath of air yet so he was not in danger of drowning but just the visual of that um, is is terrifying I'm sure so anyways um, Adam I think Adam and the midwife helped guide my hands to the baby and I was able to grab him and pull him to my chest and the pictures that you'll see at the end are just beautiful of um, of the baby actually reaching out with both of his hands towards me like that and it was just um, it was just super sweet I'm so glad she caught those um, because I was just too out of it and too weak to even and I think I was just surprised that everything happened so quickly that I just didn't even know what was going on basically um so if you're tracking with me an hour a little over an hour about an hour and 10 minutes after um she admitted me into the room he was born um i was a three to ten <laughs> to him being here in an hour and 10 minutes which is like nuts absolutely nuts so um, I was only in the pool for 11 minutes before he was born the birth assistant was only there for 11 minutes <laughs> um, before he was born and one of those prayers another one of those prayers was answered every single one of the prayers that I had asked of the Lord before all of this had been answered um, so the very last one that I realized after all this was over was we would not have made it to the birth center. Um, either we would have been here and Adam would have delivered the baby here or we would have been driving to the birth center and Adam would have had to deliver the baby because he, he arrived so quickly that we would not have had time to get there. Um, so, uh, yeah, just the just looking back and the realization of all of it, it just makes me just even more in awe of the goodness of God. And um, I'm so thankful that I had this experience. Um, we both did did well after the delivery. Um, Adam went and got me some food they, because I had had casserole. They wanted me to eat a good meal before I got up and took a shower. Um, he started nursing really well. Um, two and a half hours after he was born and he was weighed 8 14 so he wasn't he wasn't even as big as Travis was um, and he certainly wasn't 11 pounds like I was afraid of um, 20 and a half inches long um, got his birth certificate done and all that kind of stuff and um, two and a half hours we were hitting the road going back home and um, I I've never had such a good recovery even for me to be older this time I've never had such a good recovery from a birth and um, so I'm just thankful I'm just thankful for the experience I'm thankful for the staff I'm thankful for um, I'm just thankful to God for for giving this to us this time um, this is this is what I wanted and And the Lord just provided everything I wanted out of this birth and out of this baby. So, um, thank you for hearing my story. 
Thank you for listening. Thank you for your prayers all throughout the pregnancy and especially towards the end as things were getting um, a bit intense. And um, I, I just appreciate you. I love having you to talk to and to share our lives with. And um, I just thank you. I thank you for being here and for loving us. And um, so I'm going to leave you with some pictures from the delivery and um and then afterwards so i hope you guys have a good rest of your day and we'll talk to you soon